This is Strange Love Live After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome. I am really hoping that all of you noticed something a little different <laughs> about the intro. Technically, it's the same piece, but it's completely different. I should just, I'm Cami Chaos. Uh, as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. You, hi. So you noticed that uh, you actually spoke over the uh, intro? Yeah, that this was time? me. Oh, that was me talking. Wow. That was me live talking, not wow. re live talking. Live yes, talking. The live speaking. Wow. So, so that was our theme song. <laughs> that was. But it was our theme song. Done really, really well. Beautifully. Instead of, I mean, not that it was horrible before. <laughs> it was, but that was our. <laughs> exactly, our it was. Theme, <laughs> that was our theme song played by John Nastos and Clay Guyverson. Who are we'll, both here. Yeah, we'll get Clay on the camera in, in the studio. Minutes. So Say just, hi, John. Hello. We just had John on to talk about tech stuff. Uh, and now we don't want to talk about tech stuff anymore because tech is it, crap. So this strikes me as the old <laughs> peanut butter commercial. You've got my chocolate and your peanut butter. you got your chimney, you know. <laughs> or, or no, 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 no. It's the wrong commercial. But anyway. No, no, you're no, a you're a developer right. and a jazz musician. I am. And oh, it that's was, it. It's a floor shine and a dessert topping. That's, was, that's what like I was thinking It was like really of. difficult for us to decide whether we were more excited about the Twitter tech episode or the jazz music after hours. Yeah, I hear this is a first, uh, the, the musical section of Strange Love Live. We've had a musician on before, but he wouldn't play live. Okay. Bah. Right. This is the first time we'll actually have some live music on. And he certainly didn't re-record our theme song for <laughs> us. And we're very excited. We are very excited. Okay, so why don't you start off, because I can't stray too far from the tech. Why don't you start off and tell us about the, the Jazz PDX? Yeah, that's actually how I sort of uh, got into a lot of this, is I've been running a blog called jazzpdx.org for a couple of years now, and it grew out of necessity, uh, like all my projects do. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing, though. Mm -hmm. uh, there, necessity, the mother of invention. Yada, yada. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, so there, there were a couple sites in Portland that dealt with the local jazz scene that stopped updating their websites and uh, didn't, were no longer reliable sources of information for who was playing around town. So I started jazzpdx.org, which is a blog that talks about what's happening in the local jazz scene. And eventually that uh, using WordPress led me to WordCamp, which led me to Beer and Blog, which led me to you know, all this other stuff. Were you at WordCamp? I was at WordCamp. Yes, Although I, I actually left uh, to go play on KMHD uh, in the afternoon. Okay. So I was there for a little, little while. Yeah. And I have to say that um, kudos to you because most of the music and event sites that have happened in the past, I mean, Fail. you know, they're, they're well, no, they're, they're good. They're good information, but, for you know, it's kind of the design is kind of tough and everything, but using WordPress and everything, I mean, it really looks good. Oh, and thank you. You know, it's really kind of web 2.0 and you can actually go in there and figure out what's going on and you want to go there. So, yeah, I've, you know, I have to admit that there are times when I have not updated it as often as I should have. But besides that, I try to be a good resource for the community and, you know, I'm not making a ton of money on the Google ads that are on there. Those are, uh, pay a very small portion of uh, what it takes to put this stuff together. But I, you know, I think that in a lot of ways, the jazz community and the music community in Portland is a lot like the tech community. It's very tightly woven and there are people that care about each other's projects and there are people that will go out and support each other and stuff like that. So I, I hope that I can be a good resource for people uh, in that vein. So before we go any further, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you playing and, and the different because uh, you play with more than one band. You have yeah. your band, and then you have the other bands that you play with. So why don't you just give us a little rundown? So uh, the nature of being a freelancer means, you know, I don't just play with one band. I play with a lot of different groups around town. And so my schedule, which I try to keep updated, uh, you can find at johnnastos.com. Uh, the most exciting gig coming up, which I'm uh, very excited about doing, is March 13th at Jimmy Max. And so that's just in a couple of weeks, even though it seems like March is a long time away. Uh, is that Thursday? It's a Friday. That's no, a Friday. Dang Fridays. <laughs> uh, that's right. So, 
if the internet goes down and you can't listen to Strange Love live, I uh, come see John anyway. Come over to Jimmy Max. I'll be playing with King Louie and Sweet Baby James, who are. Can you just bring a laptop and we can live stream it and you know Skype it in or something? Right well, now. that would be one way. There to do we it. go. <laughs> Um, but that should be an exciting event. I mean, King Louie is a great organ player, and Sweet Baby James is one of the original guys in the Portland jazz scene. He created a lot of what exists today. Um, so I'm excited about doing that. A lot of times you can find me at tu- on Tuesdays at Jimmy Max with the Mel Brown Septet. I sub in that group pretty regularly. Uh, and, and Mel's quite a newcomer to this scene. I <laughs> yeah, think. Mel, also a newcomer to this quite, scene. Quite a mainstay in the Portland jazz scene since... I was a pup. Well, know? actually, the reason that I say this about Sweet Baby James is, if I could be wrong, but I believe Sweet Baby James gave Mel Brown his first gig. Oh, my word. Uh, so wow. that was, you know, quite a while ago. Mel Brown, for those of you that aren't uh, part of the, the jazz scene in Portland, Mel is uh, referred to as the godfather of Portland jazz or, you know, the gentleman of Portland jazz or any of those terms. He's sort of, you know, he's the, the stalwart guy. He's the, the figurehead but not in a meaningless way. He really is, you know, the figurehead of Portland Hey, jazz. hey Mel, we have a couch and a martini for you here on Strange of Live. <laughs> I make like a mean on. martini, yeah, right. vodka or gin, depending that on would, your pleasure. That would be an awesome episode. That yeah. would be. Cool guy. Um, so, yeah, and then, you know, I freelance with a bunch of groups, and then uh, I'm lucky enough to have my own bands play around occasionally. And I try to tweet that. Although a lot of times it seems like I try to keep the tech stuff and the music stuff separate so it doesn't end up on my Twitter account. But I've been encouraged by people to, uh, to tweet about that. Especially there's a couple weeks in March where, where it's possible that Dr. Normal and I might actually leave the house. So if you're playing, <laughs> okay. please tweet it. Yeah. It's um, true. We might leave the house. And you have a you have a, also on your schedule some recording gigs coming up as well. Yeah, I just recorded... Um, Boy, I want to say, I guess it was Wednesday. I recorded with a band, a local band called Commotion. That CD should be coming out uh, in the spring or the summer. Um, it's a bunch of younger guys playing original music, which is something that I think is great. Uh, and then what else is coming up? I'm going to be doing a musical at the Armory with Portland Center Stage. I'll be playing uh, Grey Gardens. So if musical theater is your thing, come out to see that one. <laughs> it's not it pays, some people's thing. It pays so. the bills, though. It does pay the bills. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's, it does. It's, when you're a musician, yeah. trust me. Yeah, it's eight shows a week, <clears throat> guaranteed. You know that you're going to be playing. So there's a lot of uh, a lo- there's something to be said for having that regular regular gig for a while. Okay, so I have two more questions, and then I think we want to move on to some music. Um, the first is you never told us the name of your band. So. I have a couple bands. Okay, uh, well, give us names. <laughs> the one that I play with most often and has Clay Iberson, who's sitting slightly off camera. And, and we'll get him on camera in a second. We right? will. Um, <laughs> we only have one camera, Clay. Uh, that band is called E4. And that I'm originally, guess four of you. well, that's <laughs> where the name falls apart, actually. Uh, it was originally supposed to be the Electric Quartet. And because of financial requirements of some shows where it's only practical to pay three people, sometimes we've done it as a trio, and then it really makes no sense at all. But uh, I, I'd like to think I haven't lost too many fans for my, my naming practices. Um, besides that, I generally try to stick to the jazz tradition of the John Nastos Quartet or Trio, which actually every year uh, the Portland Mercury puts out an episode that talks about the worst band names in Portland. And the Mel Brown Trio appears on that na- that list like every year. And <laughs> are you kidding? The Mercury's no, a I'm, punk <laughs> magazine. Well, what they, do they yeah. know of jazz, right? Well, I think they said some disparaging things about Bacon, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. They're not doing too well. Well, print media isn't doing too well, <laughs> yeah. That's true. Whoa. <laughs> Snap. Um, but, yeah, Hello, so... Portland Mercury. <laughs> Hi, guys. We love you. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm no longer going to get any of my shows plugged in that yeah. newspaper, am I? <laughs> Oh, well. Um, so, yeah. The, but the jazz tradition dictates that you name your group, your name and the number of players exactly. in your group. So Yes, that's longstanding for a long time, which is what longstanding means. The second question is, and it's not so much a question as it is a statement and an observation. You are very young. <laughs> and you play like someone who is not your age. Overachiever. 
overachiever <laughs> <laughs> well uh what i mean by that is when uh, you sent you sent some of the music for us to listen to and when you close your eyes and you listen to music which i often do and you hear the saxophone you do not hear a man I, your age playing the I saxophone i think what cammy chaos not... is trying to say and something that i was going to ask and it's we a are compliment. In, we are in after hours it's right now it's not an insult it's a compliment we are in after hours right now is usually people who play as well as you have pimped out women for their <laughs> smack habits <laughs> You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of the guys that I listen to from the great jazz traditions aren't exactly the life role models that I would want for my kids, but quite great musicians. Yeah. Well, that's that's true. We aren't after her. Uh, you really don't pimp Allie out for your smack habits. <laughs> no. She's no. a nice girl. And that would She's a very me. nice girl. Yeah. Um, no, the... <laughs> the jazz world has changed. I guess that's the the way to it describe has. that. Yeah, it has. It's kind um, of the purview of people who don't die at thirty five and have the coroner's report say they're like fifty or something, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, you know, the thing definitely used to be you go and you do a whole bunch of drugs and you play <laughs> jazz and you die early and, and yeah, and, and that tradition is and then they make a movie about you and then you can and, only well that watch is that one of the perks. Once. You can only watch the movie once because it's so emotionally upsetting. Just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And I remember when the grunge period came up in the 90s and I thought, you know, the Beboppers, you really have no clue. <laughs> Those guys would run these guys around the, you know, but anyway. Yeah, so it, it's I was a, actually it's trying to get to the, the jazz festival. Okay. Because you played a concert, a special thing. If I were more articulate, a gig? Not. yeah, but the, didn't you arrange something? Uh, well, the one that you're you may be thinking of is uh, it's on your website somewhere. So I... yeah, there. Nice. <laughs> last year, uh, not this year's festival. There's a lot of stuff that happened with this year's festival mm -hmm. that was uh, there were a lot of financial problems and stuff. But the year previous, yeah. uh, Daryl Grant, who runs the Portland State Jazz Department, Portland State University. Um, puts together a concert every year and chooses a young artist to showcase at the festival. This is what I was, yeah. <laughs> so I was lucky enough to be the uh, the sort of featured young artist of the festival, and I got to put together a concert at the old church and fly in one of my classmates from when I was in school in New York and uh, put together some of the you know the best jazz musicians in Portland and do a concert, which has been. Uh, discussed many times putting that out as a cd which has never happened because i don't have a cd to my name yet and i don't know how long it's going to take for that to happen but maybe in the future but those are some of the tracks that i heard the yeah. One, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah who who are the players on that gig uh on that gig uh there was alan jones who's a a fantastic drummer who lived in europe for a while and uh, he was really Portland. really Quite a technician, very he's nice. Amazing, yeah, yeah, he's great. And yeah. he moved back to Portland about the same time that I moved back from New York. Uh, Drew Scholes, who's also a great drummer, uh, recently moved to New York, actually. Uh, Sam Harris, who is one of my classmates from uh, from back at school. Dave Captain on bass. Mm -hmm. uh, and boy, who am I forgetting? Well, uh, Shelley Rudolph came and sang a couple songs with us, which was great. And yeah, it was a it was a wonderful concert. I was very pl privileged to be able to put that together. And so, what do you think is stopping you from releasing a CD? Well, so the technology. Getting back to tech. Correct. Uh, the you know, <laughs> Doctor Normal has released CDs from our basement, and I've done yeah. the album covers. So, it can be done. It can definitely be done, and actually. Part of the reason that I haven't released one is a lot of people by my age already have seven CDs to their name because of how easy it is to do that right now. And there's not to say that there's anything wrong with that. But now I feel like, you know, I really want my first disc to be the polished product that uh, that I've been waiting for mm -hmm. to release. And so unfortunately, I can never keep my mind set for more than a week about what I want. I think one week, oh, I want to do this project. And then the next week, I yeah, think so, something totally different. I mean, you want to do something more kind of traditional straight ahead or something more funky or, you know, is, is that part of the question? The, yeah, those are all parts of the question. I mean, you know, there's 
there's one side of me that says I want to release the funk stuff because I think people more my age might get into that more. Also, people that aren't necessarily jazz fans right. might find that listenable. A little more commercial. Right. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're not going to get the airtime on KMHD because it's not straight ahead, which is yeah. part of the promotion. You're probably not going to get reviews in certain you know, publications because you're not playing straight ahead jazz. So it's it's a very but it, complicated But is that juggling. really the, the, the debate? with you or or are you actually really thinking of something you know how do i make an artistic statement i mean well i i mean i feel like there's a way to make an artistic statement within whatever whatever style i pick you know whether it's i'm going to make okay. an organ trio record or whether i'm going to make a duo record but uh once we get past that point then the marketing questions become mm -hmm. important because the album has to pay for itself somehow mm -hmm. so Wow. So, um, do we want to take a little break here and actually uh, listen to a little live music and yeah. then come back to the discussion? I think so. Yeah. Very what are you exciting. guys going to play? Okay, so we're going to, uh, Clay and I are going to play a duo tune. Um, we're going to play a tune of mine that I wrote last year for that jazz festival concert that we talked about. Um, it's an original piece that I wrote called Up in the Air. All right. So, We'll probably take a second to get this right, and uh, you can complain in the chat room if the levels aren't. To yeah, your just uh, uh, you guys just give me a second here it. to okay. move yeah. everything. And no one complain because okay, just make me bitchy. <laughs> bye bye. Thank 
I'm glad we waited to have live music. <laughs> that was well worth it. Wow, that was great. <laughs> wow, it was a lot of fun. Well, yeah, that was fun. Thanks. That was Thank we you. Should, we should actually turn the camera back on Clay and just introduce him oh, yeah. quickly here. Um, <laughs> oh, your mic is on now. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> Give us your name and your rank and your serial number. <laughs> Nice work. Thank you. Clay. Thanks. Clay. Glad to be here. Yeah. yeah. Giberson. Th yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Sure. So you can, this is important to note, uh, you can find Clay playing with a number of groups around town, but one of his groups is the Upper Left Trio. So if you see the Upper Left Trio play, go check him out because uh, it's a great band. And they, ha uh, you have a new CD to your name too. I do, yeah. See, he has a mm -hmm. CD. I, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it came out on Origin Arts, Origin Records label out of Seattle, which is an independent jazz label, one of the finest in, uh, in the United States, actually. Um, but yeah, I'm bringing out some musicians from New York next month, and we're going to do, I think it's April 18th, which is a Saturday at Wilfs down at Union Station. All right. Station, Wilfs. So. so if you're out and about, that's something to, to check out next month. Wow. And are you on Twitter, or do you have a website or anything that you'd like to... I do. Um, the website is just my name, which is claygyberson.com, C-L-A-Y-G-I-B, is in boy, E-R-S-O-N.com. And I have a semi-current uh, live schedule there as well, <laughs> and a very minimalist blog. That was recently <laughs> updated to WordPress 2.7. Yeah, WordPress yes. 2. With your help? <laughs> yes. Yeah, with my help. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter sometimes. Oh, Not great. a lot, but uh, under Guyberspace. Gyber space. space. Gyber space, yeah. Okay. So I have to get I have to get a little more current on, on gig stuff on there too. You know, we I'm need not, to all start I'm not one for you. big self promotion, but it's you know, hey, it's it's good. Sometimes, it's you know, it, it, you I've know heard if Twitter you can't promote yourself. Well. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it, I, you know, some people are using it, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, you know. It's <laughs> one getting, or two. It's getting out, yeah. Freaking Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Get off right. my law on Twitter. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not really. Well thanks. It's all good stuff. So yeah, thanks for having me guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. So what happens now? <laughs> I think we should move the microphone. Out yeah, of the we way. need to move the microphone out of the way here, and and now we can just evolve into afterwards. Well, I well, I wanted to talk about oh, Doctor Normal has content. Um, so you just played some some music, and um, are you a software developer or a jazz musician? So <laughs> tell us a little bit about you know you you kind of you kind of had this problem in school trying to figure out what you wanted to do and then it ended up taking you to New York and playing with a few people as well. Yep. I feel like we're in an after school special now. That's right. <laughs> That's okay though. A very hip after school special. I want to hear the answer. I just yeah. felt the need to make the comparison. Yeah. Yeah, well I uh my dad was a software developer and um actually some people in the chat room are probably aware of this sort of um the chain of stuff that he went through. He was one of the Tektronics guys. And Tektronics, you know, spurn a lot of what the tech community is in Portland now, I think. Um, so he was a Tektronics guy. And Tektronics was pretty much the father of, you know, most all tech. Uh, there's actually a, ma there's a map, a software or, or technology development map of Oregon. And it kind of spawns from Tektronix. Yeah, it all came from yeah. Tektronix. They're kind of like the HP of Oregon, essentially. Yeah. Like HP and Silicon Valley kind of spawned everybody else, right? Yeah, it's it definitely... Uh, it, it, a lot of people came out of that company to do other projects that are well-known today. Um, and so my dad was a developer, and he, you know, he taught me to write a certain amount of code and then sent me to you know, Saturday Academy classes and stuff like that. And when I was in high school, it came time to apply to colleges and I hadn't decided what I wanted to do yet, whether I was going to do music or whether I was going to do tech stuff. So I applied to 50% computer science programs and 50% conservatory programs and then, you know, got my letters back, saw where my options, what my options were. And I decided that it was better to do the, uh, the conservatory route first, which I'm really happy that I did. Um, not to say that I wouldn't have been happy going the other route, but it turned out well for me. Um, but then, you know, after I moved back from New York, after living there for a few years, uh, I started seeing 
Portland's vibrant technology scene, which I'm really happy to be a part of. And, you know, I'm thrilled to be on this show, for instance. That was one of my goals, and I've achieved it. <laughs> um, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, you know. Hey, that's what Dr. Normal told me after he met you. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I met Dr. Normal at, uh, at Cyborg Camp. Cyborg Camp. Camp. Yeah. And, yeah, and I told him, and then it... Look at this. It turned out. And Dr. Normal did the double take looking behind his shoulder. You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be on my show? <laughs> Do you you know that we film it in our basement, right? <laughs> you got that, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I make my living as a musician. And I think it's always kind of fun to, to meet new people that, because I, I always seem to be the opposite of the general trend. I meet so many people that say, you know, I do this for my day job, and but boy, I, you know, I love playing music and doing that as my side project, and I'm the total opposite. So, you know, I play music as my as the paying gig, and I do web stuff as the side project, and I think it works great. So you're walking into a rehearsal going, guys, guys, you should see this code that I just wrote. It's so <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake more than once, Mel and Brown they almost never you, care. Like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> Kid, get off my lawn. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... That would be get off my swinging lawn. <laughs> Excuse okay. me. Someone please go uh, hashtag that and then go define it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So yeah, there there are the rare the rare intersection of technology and music. And actually, I have been doing some web work um, for for musicians in town, setting up their websites. So there's that intersection of stuff. But son, you need to get some skills in life, really. <laughs> I mean, you know, playing music, uh, learning, writing code. writing code. I mean, clearly you need uh, some skills, right? Nur I hear nursing's big, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are, are we mocking nursing? No, no. I, I, that's not I, mock nursing. I, I not First mock of all, nursing. nursing in the audience going on. Secondly, three of my cousins are nurses. Overachiever. Um, anyway. Um, <coughs> I do, Fucking big. Okay. I actually want to. <laughs> so I brought up um, uh, a band when I was uh, in high school. A band came out, came out of Cuba called Irakiri. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. launched uh, the careers. I mean, they let them out of Cuba. And like a bunch of the guys escaped immediately, right? My favorite. One of which movie. was Paquito de Rivera. Yeah. The sax player. And I mentioned this to you and you said, Oh, Paquito, yeah, I played with him in New York. So tell me a little bit about <laughs> that. At which point Dr. Normal's jaw kind of fell to the yeah. floor and went, I hate you. I hate you so much. No, I didn't hate yeah. him. I was just like, Wow. Well, this is actually one of those uh those things that you can put on a resume in and it can yeah, mean different so. things. Yeah. Well, this I'm oh, okay. probably not going okay. where you think I am uh -oh. with this. Uh -oh. <laughs> what I mean is that uh, I did play with Piquito at one point, but however, it was a school-related um, activity. We had a concert that was part of the school. So I don't want, you know, I by no means yeah, yeah. did Piquito yeah, call me up and say, come play with me at the Blue Note. But I did get to hear him and I did get to, to play with him. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. So that's, you know, that's part of what happens in New York is you get to, right. and to meet and play with people And that's like why that. you went there. Yeah. What other people, were there other folks that cruised through your school? I mean, as far as, you know, I mean. Yeah, the, the school that I went to uh, was really good about getting people to come through and play with us or talk to us about the experiences of music business or playing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I met, you know, quite a few of the heroes that I had heard on recordings, which was great. Like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Dave Liebman, Maria Schneider. I'm, you know, I'm about to list a whole bunch of people that yeah, no yeah. one's ever heard of if they haven't listened to a whole like, bunch of jazz. Yeah, but, okay. um, drop. Drop away. Well, so who are your influences on the sax? Uh, well, on the saxophone, actually, if I'm going to name drop, I might as well uh, actually, you know, go the, go ahead. the whole nine yards. I was lucky. I got to study with Bob Mincer, who uh, is the saxophone player with the Yellow Jackets. And even if you haven't learned, well, listened to jazz, you've probably run across the Yellow Jackets at some point. The Yellow Jackets at some point, yeah. Yeah, they're, you know, they're, even if you didn't know it, you've almost certainly heard them. Um, so I got to study with him. But uh, in actuality, my influences are primarily Portland guys. Uh, I grew up listening to Warren Rand and Renato Caranto, who are local players, who I still respect more than, or not more, but as much as any player that I met on the East Coast. 
and I was privileged to study with them and I'm lucky enough to play with them almost every week on gigs. So Portland has a great scene for stuff so like that. So outside of the obvious jazz styles, is there an East Coast sax, I mean, specific to the sax, is there East Coast style and a West Coast style? I think there used to be. Really? Uh, I think there used to be a few decades ago, you know, when the there was sort of a cool jazz movement that was going on on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And then there was, there's sort of an L.A. thing that's a little different than New York thing. But I think a lot of those lines have been blurred and, and have disappeared over time. Wow. Okay, so I want to bring this back to how small Portland is. The only other musician we've ever had on the show is John Braz. Oh, yeah. Or the only other musician we've had on the show because he's a musician is John Braz. Right. And you have an interesting connection to John Braz. Yeah, I, the name was, uh, you know, his name is unique enough that I figured this must be true. Uh, and it turns out that it is, that I was in second grade with his son, Nick. So, yeah, we're all, we're all connected. Portland is, Portland is constantly surprising little. us as Portland how small it is. Itty bitty tiny. All right, I think we need to move on to a little bit more after hours protocol and then come back. Okay. We need to introduce the studio audience. Oh, okay. Good idea. So I need someone and to maybe grab... they have some good questions too. Exactly. I need someone to grab the microphone. <laughs> Allie, you're nominated. <laughs> and I must let me know, let me find the Allie microphone. is grabbing the microphone and and she has also made strange of life history. This is the second time she's been in the studio audience. The first time she was in the studio audience, <laughs> she created a Twitter account here in our basement. That yeah. She doesn't tweet very often. I'm working on it, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Allie, and my Twitter name is Allie PDX. Hi, Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi, I'm Crunchy Sue. My Twitter name is Crunchy Sue. <laughs> and Crunchy the, Sue is the yeah. one who correctly identified all of the tweeple in the Strange Love Live Ignite Portland 5 commercial. Yeah, yeah. right on top of it. And with the Twitter names. She she named them all by name, and then yeah. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I need their Twitter Apparently names. cheating does not work in this contest. <laughs> Damn it. I need Twitter names. Fine. I'm Aaron Hockley, and if you don't know my Twitter name, you can go figure it out yourself. <laughs> go look on Facebook. Because face. we can't give everyone all the answers. Because they need to take some personal responsibility and figure it <laughs> out on their Aaron own. Because Aaron Hockley likes to say, get off my lawn, a lot. If you want to uh, read, read the about... terms of service of his lawn. Yeah, re read. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> That was nice. I like that. And here, a lot. here, I was gonna make the joke. <laughs> Sorry, I was sorry. gonna say he was on Zuckerberg's death pool <laughs> list, but you know, this oh, is geez. funny. It's okay, it's give funny. it to him. Yeah, yeah. no, no, I. It's awesome. I'm afraid you have to take the microphone. Yeah, because I've never done that before. <laughs> I know you don't like um, to talk into it. Yeah, this is Kelly, and I'm on Twitter as Verso. Never heard of you. <laughs> there had to be one. Oh Ewan wait, Hockley. and Ooh. and why don't you just briefly tell everyone? what your job qualifications are. <laughs> oh, Lord. She doesn't have a mic. I can't. She won't give me the oh, mic back. Oh, Allie, give back to her. She's looking for a job. <laughs> so, um, one thing I can do that's actually probably... No, gonna do this stuff. I have a number of marketable skills, but the biggest one is probably that I can explain technological things to non-technological people. She makes me so, understand things. I can make Cammie understand stuff. Uh, my mom knows a little bit more <laughs> about Twitter than she did before. Got and me on Twitter, yeah. I've actually recruited someone actively on Twitter. Yeah. And that was Allie, our first studio audience member this mm. evening. Because she didn't have a Twitter name. So I went to, the, I signed out of Twitter, went to the page, and pointed my laptop at her in the studio audience and got her signed up. It was actually kind of cool. So. Qualifications? I, I thought um, we were. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll do that later. This is just, you know, for fun. Okay. Yes. Uh, I have 12 years of te technical support experience. I am an Apple certified technical coordinator for Mac OS 10.5. And halfway through the study track for an A-plus certification, um, I'm kind of a nerd like that. And she's a cool. She, okay, let, talk to let, me, okay. let me say this, though. She speaks geek and English. All right. Okay. This is true. I okay. can go out in public and, and speak to normal people as well. Yes. Okay. Now. What else do we have to do that's after hour Z before we go back to music? I think, um, oh, we have the drink music, but um, he's got the keyboard, so. I, I don't <laughs> the, know. The, the drink music, Can you uh, just, I, sh I shouldn't say what it is. Though. Can you just hum it? Well, it's it's a decifonado. It should oh. be, is actually, seriously? 
I mean... Just have him play songs. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he's a jazz right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, among the Strange Up Live first tonight, a live... I'm going to be theme. spoiled by the end of this, and I'm going to be I like, know. why can't we have a band? Exactly. I want a band. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're working on it, All right, right fine. We need um, a new Tonight, space. Cammy Chaos is drinking a dirty, dry Bombay martini. <laughs> yeah, keep it rolling. Yeah, you got to keep going. I'm sorry. It takes a while. It's yeah. on the sequencer, so it just kind of loops, right? John Nastas has finished his ginger beer. I have. Dr. Dr. Normal's thinking about how he's got to pay Clay scale now <laughs> <laughs> for this. Um, uh, I, I'm, I have some kava. Okay. Um, they don't have the microphones. So I'll tell you Aaron Hawkins. No, drinking. no, we can give him the mic. Oh, okay. It's just right there. I'm getting my money worth. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron has just finished his second beer and will be stopping so he can drive home. Uh, good Good boy. idea. <laughs> Versus drinking a uh, foofy pink and yet non-tiki beverage that Cammy made. What's in it? Wait a minute, what's in it? Uh, pink stuff and stuff. Okay, um, cran raspberry Sorry. juice, strawberry sea monster, Ooh. orange juice, and gin. Strawberry sea monster. Crunchy Sue's drinking the famous Cammy Chaos Dirty Martini. Ooh. But with uh, vodka. What I mean is has already drunk it and also <laughs> eaten the olives. <laughs> but it has vodka in it. Not gin. Okay. Allie is being a copycat of Verso and drinking the foofy pink Ooh. cami drink. Foofy pink cami drink. My specialty. Oh, and and last out. Oh, and Clay was... On the mic? No? Yeah. He can... Oh, we're getting a lot of... Oh, yeah, actually, a lot of key now. pounding noise. What is it? I have a hard time playing and singing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking at the same time. Uh, I had a, a very tasty Jubal Ale. Oh, there you go. Uh, who makes yeah. Jubilee Oil? Uh, Deschutes Brewery, I believe. Yeah. Which, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you so much, Clay. What are you doing next Friday night? Yeah, our regular <laughs> drink music sucks. He has a real gig. Uh, gig. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. We can pay yeah. you in Jubilee. Yeah, yeah, we need a, a <laughs> sponsor. I can reconsider. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if if you'd like us to have uh, real music, you could sponsor us. Yeah, we'll but you'd have to it. pay us a lot because we don't even you know make costs at this point. <laughs> That's so. right. We'll work on it. <sighs> oh. Okay. So I just looked at the clock and realized well, how long we've been talking. No, we're oh, still wow. we're still rolling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Um, so we're back to the influences. Any classic influences as far as from the, you know, the classic era of bebop or jazz? First of all, what's your favorite kind of, what's your favorite style of, of jazz? Jazz kind of encompasses a lot of ground, so to speak. It does. Uh, I I don't know that there's that there are good names for styles of jazz anymore. Um, but one of I my agree favorite. With you, by the way. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, well, it's. I shouldn't say that that's just true for jazz. That's true for any type of music. Uh, I I like a lot of different stuff. One of my favorite groups is the band Oregon. So if you haven't heard of oh, the yeah. band Oregon, you should yeah. Google them and uh, and go check them out. They're great. Uh, I like you know I like fusiony stuff. I like funk stuff. Um, you know, Maceo Parker is one of my favorites. Who's one of the guys that came out of James Brown's band, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. But the reality is, I grew up listening to bluegrass music, and that's uh, so I listened to a lot of stuff like that. Um, so is that something you some? Because a lot of what we grow up with musically, the influences, even you know, if you get into jazz or whatever, you somehow kind of incorporate that. Yeah, that's, into your style or sound or some some influence do you anything you do there with because i mean bluegrass and jazz are kind of interesting and in juxtaposition so to speak they are yeah and to tell you the truth i i would be trying to play a lot more bluegrass gigs if saxophone were a part of that <laughs> genre which it's right. not um but i think it has affected my compositions and stuff like that oh cool uh 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I had a different, I had a wide variety of influences. I got in a, a lot of trouble at school, actually, because uh, I didn't have the traditional influences that you're supposed to. And I sort of felt like I got almost cheated into buying a lot of old jazz recordings that I don't really like. Really? I mean, wow. I think that there are a lot of people that don't like jazz because they have certain ideas about what it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they're not exposed to other things. And, you know, there are, there are things that I won't listen to that... I'm afraid I need examples. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I do too. I'm not sure I want to dig myself into a hole here. Well, you, uh, okay, but, you, you can be safe. I mean... Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I bet I might need examples once the microphones are turned off, because... Yeah. Well... <laughs> and you know what? I understand this, because um, I was classically trained and trying to be jazz trained and that was the same problem right you know it was the exact same problem and it was like yeah you know you're digging me in this hole of this you know stuff that you're doing and it's like it's just not you know come on you know it's like yeah it's it's a big problem i mean telling yeah. people that they have to have certain influences because the reality is what happens if everyone has exactly the same influences is people end up sure uh, you don't have the diversity in music that you Absolutely. Would want. Um, so, you know, the, I, oh, there's <laughs> chaos in the peanut gallery. Imagine that on this show. <laughs> chaos. Hey, we made it almost till midnight. I'm just alone. <laughs> um, well, we still got a show rolling. There's a lot of finger pointing yeah. going on. So okay. we're going to have him finish his thought and then we're going to yeah, find we, out what well, the hell we're okay, on we'll, about. Okay, we'll find out in a minute. So the, I mean, when people think jazz, they think sort of classic stuff. They think Charlie Parker and mm -hmm. John Coltrane mm -hmm. and Miles yeah. Davis. Mm -hmm. And those are all great musicians, and I enjoy listening to all of them. But given the choice, that's not what I put on sure. my car stereo just because I'm a jazz musician. So uh -huh. what do you put on your car stereo? Uh, I put on a Leo Kotke record. I put on, uh, you know, the Yellow Jackets. I put on Michael Brecker, James Taylor. Uh, yeah, I was going to, I was wondering about Michael Brecker. Michael Brecker is, was one of the most fantastic musicians to ever live, I think. Yeah, I, I noticed a bit of Michael Brecker in your playing. Well, <laughs> thank you. I yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, so I mean there's there's a lot of stuff out there and I wish there were that it were uh, an easier thing to expose people to the different varieties of what goes on because just like I might be listening to more rock music because I mm -hmm. can't find exactly what I want to listen to, I think people might be listening to more jazz. Um Tyler, Tyler and CMYK on Twitter, and I were Hi, talking Tyler. recently, hello, uh, because he wanted me to try to point him in the direction of something he might enjoy. So I sent him mm -hmm. a couple links to some Keith Jarrett stuff, and he said, oh, yeah, I like, I love Keith you know, I like this part of it, and I wasn't as into this. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'll send you stuff that, you know, was more like segment was it, A. Was it uh, solo piano stuff? Or? Uh, yeah, I sent him two solo things, and he enjoyed the stuff yeah. that was more classically oriented, and that's, you know, it's yeah. perfectly valid. That's... I think that it's great that um, that things like that happen. So hopefully people can find things that they, they like and, and go out. So if you check out Jazz PDX, maybe you can find one or two groups that you like. And even in this difficult economic climate, find a couple bucks to go out and hear them in Portland. Well, so um, I think you bring up a good point, And that is there's the jazz purists, right? Yeah. And I, I love I love all the jazz, the pure jazz stuff like you know that you brought up as well but then there, there's also the people who experiment i mean i i i grew up loving you know um charlie parker and coltrane as much as i loved weather report right you know and weather report at that time in the 70s did a lot of things with jazz that well i mean it wasn't i mean it was music right it was hard to describe yeah um and sometimes do you think jazz is in a renaissance in that area where it's breaking new ground or or does it get into that little kind of um, classicism of here's how we play our jazz and this is how, you know, we're going to we're going to move forward and, and, and it's kind of stale. I right. think there are, there are communities or microcosms of the community that do that. Mm -hmm. uh, or that do each of those, you know, there are people that are really pushing to try new things. And even within that, you know, there are people pushing this direction and people pushing the other way. And then there are those guys that are saying, nope, we're going to do it exactly or as close to it as what was right. going on 50 years ago. Right. So, 
and they're all kind of valid. Oh in yeah. A way. I mean, I, I like I like both sides, right? The the thing that's not valid is when one of those groups tries to say this is the way to do it. it I think that's the way with life in general, yeah. though. It's the way with religion. It's so, the way with so, politics. It's the way with music. So, what exactly. are your feelings on? Uh, I mean, I, I think he's come around since, but Wynton Marsalis was really on this trip for many many years. <laughs> yeah, he was, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And no, I mean he's a great <laughs> player, great, fantastic he is a great musician. Player. Winton has uh, done a lot of great things for the jazz Absolutely. scene, and I think he's done, uh, maybe not intentionally, but I think he's also done a lot of damage to it. Well, years ago, when I was in college, studying music, he was ripping Herbie Hancock a new one because of like Rocket and all the right. stuff that Herbie was doing in the '80s, like with video and stuff. And Herbie was like, "Hey, man." back off i mean i did headhunters i did yeah played with miles i did all this stuff but it's all music it's all experimentation i think now when normally we would do something crazy like make really? everyone tell us our their three favorite movies <laughs> okay. i would like to go around the room and and it doesn't have to be a jazz artist but i'd like to hear everyone's three go-to artists musicians oh, man. Oh. three you can do three. I would. I w I choose three as an arbitrary number. It's my favorite <laughs> go-to. I could say seven. Seven's my favorite number. That would be more difficult. So three is pretty good. Let's start so are there. you going to start with the chat room? Yeah, or we'll the start chat with room for these the, people here in the, the audience. Okay. No, anyone, anyone at all, anyone. No, let's start with what you would load your music up with. These folks. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the "What's on Your iPod" segment. <laughs> oh, I like that. That should be a recurring segment. What's on my iPod? No, don't answer that this because I have been in your car and I know what's on your iPod. <laughs> Three artists. Yeah. Three artists. Go to. This is Verso. My Talk standard about. issue go to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does somebody have one before? I have two. Sure I've got two. I was going to say, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the Jeopardy thing? Okay, my three would be <laughs> Matthew Good, Depeche Mode, The Beatles. Okay. All right, hand it back. Mr. Hockley. I have a very eclectic music collection. Uh, so we're going to go with Weird Al Yankovic, yeah. <laughs> Colin yeah. Hay, and no, Metallica. Colin Hay. And who is the and last Meta one? Metallica. Okay. Now, right. I, 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 wait, wait a minute. Like wait a minute. old Metallica? Metallica? Or like, the guys like who old, wanted, old Metallica. Who wanted okay. to sue the Run internet the out of existence. Run so the, the best part is like the interplay between those three because on the way over <laughs> here. That sounds like my iPod. On the way over here tonight, I was listening to Weird Al happened to come up and it was the don't download this song song where yeah. he makes fun of Metallica yeah, yeah, for yeah. their antics. So anyway, I still have to say, I am going to interject here. The best thing, if you can find, it's got to be up on YouTube. I, I got to search it. Weird Al Yankovic, like years and years ago, did an HBO special uh, on himself. And he basically takes the Weird Al Yankovic kind of feel through the decades so there's a point where he's like Jimi hendrix and he's like playing with the trio and he throws his accordion down in front of the amplifier <laughs> and lights it on fire yeah. it's absolutely hilarious i'm not sure what it's called but you got to check it out okay, okay. it's absolutely crunchy hilarious. Steve. okay i'm gonna go with joan jett number one Ooh. nice mm -hmm. joan jett mm -hmm. yeah. oh. okay oh, oh. No, she's, flashing she's flashing us <laughs> I didn't see it, so. No, it's Joan Jett. It's the Joan Jett oh, shirt. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. It's the Joan Jett shirt. Number two, ACDC. ACDC. Mm -hmm. Real and hardcore rock and roll there. Number three would be Stevie Ray Vaughan. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, oh Stevie very nice. Ray Vaughan. Very nice. Okay, I think I would have to go with Maceo Parker, mm -hmm. Morphine, mm -hmm. and Billy Joel. <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> Much to Billy. Mr. John Ness, just, just me. <laughs> Okay, Clay. Well, what Billy was it? Wait a minute. What was the dismay? Okay. Was See, it the we last have one? which one is the dismay about who's better, James Taylor or Billy Joel? Oh. I can't believe you didn't say number one, John Nestor. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that too, oh. but you know what? In all fairness, I'm not going to say Doctor Normal. So. <laughs> okay, so let's turn Clay's mic on. Okay. <laughs> Three is I don't know for a musician that's like. It's torture. It's almost tough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, you know, it's like, what? I mean, I could, you know. Um, 
But I'll just go, I'll go with a little bit more of just what I've been listening to this past week, which could change, you know, from any time. So I'll go with uh, uh, guitarist Kurt Rosenwinkel. Um, uh, I'm blanking here. Oh, Flying Lotus, who's who's actually um, related to John Coltrane. He's a young kind of electronic artist. Um, that's two. And what else have I been listening to? Um, uh, the new back record, I guess, the latest back record. Hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Huh? Who wants to go? Not me. <laughs> I don't want to go. I'll go. Um, Tom Waits. Always oh. Tom Waits. Yeah. Oh, wow. Big <sighs> surprise. Let me think, yeah. Cammy loves Tom Waits. <laughs> um, Sun House. Hmm? Oh, yeah. And uh, it varies week to week, but um, Willie Nelson. Hmm? It could also have easily been Nick Cave, but right now it's Willie Nelson. Yeah, see, that's surprising me. Nick Cave would figure in pretty. Yeah, I've been on a big Willie kick these days. Well, but then that'll change to Nick Cave. Kick. N- yeah, next week it'll be Nick Cave, I'm sure. Yeah. Or or maybe a <laughs> Mazzy Star. Mazzy, yeah. oh man, actually, Cammy, you turned me on to that Mazzy Star mm-hmm. CD when I met you, and I was like, very, I was like, wow, just the sonic kind of escape there so john you're up next <laughs> okay uh well it's, it's tough like clay said for a musician to, See, I to <laughs> take a list like that i feel like i should do my broca <laughs> no uh, john yes oh god <laughs> Mike, come on Yay! give us your three <laughs> top picks okay. just ignore it <laughs> we all do it's okay I'm, I'm watching the clock. By the time he's done, we're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time, so be quiet and let him talk. Okay, so uh, I'd say Leo Kotke. He's a great uh, solo guitar player. He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Brecker, saxophone player we mentioned earlier. And uh, uh, Bela Fleck and the Flecktones. Oh, wow. With that. Wow. <laughs> Kelly was very excited. <laughs> All right, Dr. Normal. Oh, so Three. screwed. <laughs> Three. I, I I can't. This is this is so difficult for me. I don't care. <laughs> Have I mentioned I listen to a lot of spoken word podcasts because wow. I get very. Uh, is this the same thing with you? Can you Hi. listen to music and work? It's it, it's difficult. Yeah. So like yeah. when you code and stuff, can you actually listen to music? Uh, not effectively. I no. think Neither that's a musician can I. thing. I, can I work better listen when I to listen music. to music. Everyone you talk to, it's like, oh, I'm listening to music and I'm working, and it's like I can't do that. Yeah. Play. When I'm listening to music, oh no, no. Yeah. I mean, well, it depends. I guess it depends on on different. I mean, people are different, you know, multitasking. I think yeah. it, it just depends. Yeah. And there's certain music that you can kind of. But if you have to concentrate, to right? Can you listen to music and and concentrate on what you're doing? Something right. Else? Well, it's the same thing as can you know? Can you watch TV and write? paper exactly you know same kind of thing for me it's the same kind of thing so but but for me having some you know having the music background it's like i'm if i hear music my brain starts firing off and i'm listening to what the drummer's doing and trying to break it down yeah i think you'd be worried you know because you know musician playing gigs a lot of times you're playing in kind of a background situation yeah and it's easy to kind of turn off to that yeah so i i would start to worry if you you could do things while you know, if you could play music and be doing thinking other things as well, that means you're <laughs> yeah. not you're not concentrating exactly. fully on what you're doing. Exactly, so. because you can. Yeah, I mean, you you can play. You're looking over here at the bartender pouring a drink or whatever, but everything's going through your head through your ears, and you know exactly what's going on at that time. You know, right? the, you the funny thing the, about Doctor Normal is that when he listens to music, if it has vocals, he doesn't even hear the vocals. I have and, a hard time yeah. listening to lyrics. I'm exactly yeah, no the same way. Song it's true. I don't know the lyrics oh, Allie, to any songs. I feel your pain so much. <laughs> I'm always telling him, like, classic songs that were around yeah. before I was. I'm always telling him the it's lyrics, like, too, because he's like... This is a great song. I, I have no idea it's what like, that song's about. I don't know. It doesn't sound that great to me. It's or he's like, like oh, well, that's such don't a... Don't you ha- hear what he's singing? He's it's like, that's like, such really. a happy song. I'm like, God, that is one of the most depressing songs ever written. What the hell are you talking about? He's like... This is why I like Elvis, because Elvis <laughs> sings a song, and the lyrics are pretty basic, you know, back in that 50s kind you're, of rock and you're roll You're trying thing. to get Easy. out of three. I'm sorry, that's hashtag get off my lawn, for sure. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> I just got flipped off on this show. <laughs> but pick, I, pick I'm three. glad that I'm not the only one that can't 
if I'm writing or if I'm doing something, I cannot yeah. listen to I music. I think it's a musician thing. Anything that's coming through I don't through think my... it's a bad thing. I think you're right. I think, okay. Well, yeah. anything that's right. coming through my ears is like, I got to like, what's going on there? You know, it's like... It's... Okay, Dr. Normal, three musicians, three artists, three things. Okay, I thought of one. So I've got one in my head, <laughs> and that would be Frank Zappa. Yep. Because... I was waiting for that, It would be yeah. just the diversity of the work it would be pretty easy to find something that Frank would do that would fit the moment. Um, you know, I got to go with something classic and jazz and that's a tough one. You know, you know, is it Dizzy and Bird? Is it Coltrane? Is it, um, uh, miles, miles. well, yeah, miles is huge. I mean, I, it probably, probably miles. I was, you know, I was even thinking of, uh, you know, Wes Montgomery, you know, all these guys the, you mentioned the Oregon jazz stuff. Yep. I mean, I love like Jimmy Smith, uh, um, Jack, uh, you know, all those, You're Jack Duff, all, these, all these three. people, you know, You're it's like, cheating it's, it's really so tough. much. It's just like turn three. on a really good DJ okay, that's wait, playing wait. this stuff. In Frank your set, Zappa. Right? Frank Zappa. Um, the next two out of your mouth are the two that you pick. So the problem is, so can we just say this is all like kind of jazz and non-classical music? Okay. Whatever you say, babe. Because if it was all music, I'd have to like add Stravinsky. Okay. No, no. Only jazz. Guys. Only jazz. Only jazz. Okay. So Zappa kind of falls in the jazz category. Mm -hmm. uh, Miles is definitely um, good. Okay. Um, you, know, I, you know what popped in my head tonight is... Chick Korea, nice. I mean some Chick Korea. That's a good choice. And even even like from the you know even from the old Return to Forever days with Al Di Miola and the really uh, and that's that's where it kind of breaks in. I like that stuff and the old John McLaughlin Mahavishnu. Like if I really like when people want to listen to Metallica. When I was a kid, I used to wanted to listen to the Mahavishnu Orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, and listen to them like go off and you know do their crazy stuff or Return to Forever. You know, that sort of thing. At so. this point, if I were in control so of the that's microphone, not an answer. I would mute Dr. Normal and say, <laughs> I know. ladies and gentlemen, we've gone over an hour. We're out of time for our after hours Actually, episode. we're right at an hour. Oh, are so. we? Yeah. Good yeah, job, honey. I'm keeping, here. keeping track. I'm watching the time. You're, you're watching the clock. I we am. started way late tonight. <laughs> I know. I know we did. So. so, but we need to, it is time to wrap it up, isn't it? Well, you know, yeah. I mean, we're we're like I said, you're watching the clock. We started rather late tonight, so. So, John, uh, anything else uh, you can think of right now that you okay, have in your mind? I'll, since we're on this music thing, <laughs> I would like to say one very brief thing. Okay. And that is uh, all this stuff actually with Aaron and the terms of service stuff is what reminded me of this. Oh. Um, the. Ever since the days of Napster, there's been a lot of controversy over copying music and intellectual property and stuff like that. And so the only thing that I'd like to say without getting into a debate about this or anything is uh, if there are people out there that are downloading music and are under the impression that it's just the record label that's getting hurt from this and not the artists, uh, you, you might be misguided in that opinion. So I would strongly urge you to... Uh, you know, if you're downloading music, maybe think about the implications that that has for artists, because some of us do make money on that. And uh, it's it's really not property that's meant to be copied and distributed. So, so. that's good. That, that kind of opened up a whole... Okay, I know. That's why next I was, Now we have a whole new episode yeah. about Live. that. <laughs> because, I mean, that, that comes to the whole open source and the whole idea, you know, on micropayments and maybe right. paying directly to the... I think... It's all about intent. Um, but that in, you know, that intent yeah. has to be clear and you can't just assume that you can copy whatever you so, want. So uh, just to, just to be my, my counter argument, having studied the music business and record business and being appalled at the terms of service of those guys. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's changed now, but the traditional, <laughs> I, I mean, I would say, I would say that, um, I would say that, um, what's. <laughs> No, 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 I want to say this. <laughs> I know you do. Um, I think what we now have is an ability for artists to actually get properly paid. Right, which is fantastic. And that's the thing we're all trying to drive to. Yep. I don't know that the audience necessarily wants to rip off the artists. They just want to make sure that if they're paying, it's going to you yeah. and not some not shyster middleman, which is what's happened 
for you know decades and decades and decades exactly. in the past. Yeah. So. All right, Doctor Norma, I think it's time to say good night. Uh, All right. It is. It's time to say good night. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, play some music that we ripped off from John. <laughs> <laughs> with permission. Can you, yeah, yes, can you, can you tell us what we're going to listen to as we roll out here? Uh, we're going to listen to the band that I referenced earlier, E4, the Electric Quartet, with Clay Iberson on keyboards, Damian Erskine on bass, and Drew Scholes on drums, playing a composition of mine called The Last Chief. Thank you, John. Thank you, Clay. Uh, everyone, join us next week. We're going to talk to Shazow about some exciting Ooh. new things that they're doing. That's right. And South by Southwest. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Really exciting. Yeah. Great. Pleasure Good night, for us everyone. Too.